All, all to Jesus I consecrate anew. He is my portion forever. Only his glory henceforth will I pursue. He is my portion forever. All, all to Jesus my trusting heart can say, He is my portion forever. Led by his mercy, I'm walking every day. He is my portion forever. Though he may try me, this blessed truth I know, he is my portion forever. He will not leave me, his promise tell me so. He is my portion forever. All, all to Jesus, I cheerfully resign. He is my portion forever. I have the witness that he, my Lord, is mine. He is my portion forever. Take, take the world with all its gilded toys. Take, take the world. I covet not its joy. Mine is a wealth. No more, no rust, destroy. Jesus, my portion forever. Thank you. 
today we're going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we're asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We're asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The fourth book of Moses, called Numbers, chapter 17. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and take of every one of them a rod, according to the house of their fathers. Of all their princes, according to the house of their fathers, twelve rods. Write thou every man's name upon his rod. And thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi, for one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. And thou shalt lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony, where I will meet with you. And it shall come to pass that the man's rod whom I shall choose shall blossom, and I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Israel, whereby they murmur against you. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, and every one of their princes gave him a rod apiece, for each prince one according to their father's houses, even twelve rods. And the rod of Aaron was among their rods. And Moses laid up the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. And it came to pass that on the morrow Moses went into the tabernacle of witness, and behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded, and brought forth buds, and bloomed blossoms, and yielded almonds. And Moses brought out all the rods from before the Lord unto all the children of Israel, and they looked and took every man his rod. And the Lord said unto Moses, Bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony, to be kept for a token against the rebels. And thou shalt quite take away their murmurings from me, that they die not. And Moses did so. As the Lord commanded him, so did he. And the children of Israel spake unto Moses, saying, Behold, we die, we perish, we all perish. Whosoever cometh anything near unto the tabernacle of the Lord shall die. Shall we be consumed with dying? Chapter 18 And the Lord said unto Aaron, Thou and thy sons and thy father's house with thee shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary, and thou and thy sons with thee shall bear the iniquity of your priesthood. And thy brethren also, the tribe of Levi, the tribe of thy father, bring thou with thee, that they may be joined unto thee, and minister unto thee. But thou and thy sons with thee shall minister before the tabernacle of witness. And they shall keep thy charge, and the charge of all the tabernacle. Only they shall not come nigh the vessels of the sanctuary and the altar, that neither they nor ye also die. And they shall be joined unto thee, and keep the charge of the tabernacle of the congregation, for all the service of the tabernacle and a stranger shall not come nigh unto you. And ye shall keep the charge of the sanctuary and the charge of the altar, that there be no wrath any more upon the children of Israel. And I, behold, I have taken your brethren the Levites from among the children of Israel. To you they are given as a gift for the Lord to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Therefore thou and thy sons with thee shall keep your priest's office for everything of the altar and within the veil, and ye shall serve. I have given your priest's office unto you as a service of gift, and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, Behold, I also have given thee the charge of mine heave offerings of all the hallowed things of the children of Israel. Unto thee have I given them by reason of the anointing, and to thy sons by an ordinance forever. This shall be thine of the most holy things, reserved from the fire. Every oblation of theirs, every meat offering of theirs, and every sin offering of theirs, and every trespass offering of theirs, which they shall render unto me, shall be most holy for thee and for thy sons. In the most holy place shalt thou eat it. Every male shall eat it, it shall be holy unto thee. And this is thine, the heave offering of their gift, with all the wave offerings of the children of Israel. I have given them unto thee, and to thy sons, and to thy daughters with thee, by a statute forever. Every one that is clean in thy house shall eat of it. All the best of the oil, and all the best of the wine, and of the wheat, the first fruits of them which they shall offer unto the Lord, them have I given thee. And whatsoever is first ripe in the land which they shall bring unto the Lord shall be thine. Every one that is clean in thine house shall eat of it. Everything devoted in Israel shall be thine. 
everything that openeth the matrix in all flesh which they bring unto the Lord, whether it be of men or beasts, shall be thine. Nevertheless, the firstborn of man shalt thou surely redeem, and the firstling of unclean beasts shalt thou redeem. And those that are to be redeemed, from a month old shalt thou redeem, according to thine estimation, for the money of five shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, which is twenty giras. But the firstling of a cow, or the firstling of a sheep, or the firstling of a goat, thou shalt not redeem. They are holy. Thou shalt sprinkle their blood upon the altar, and shalt burn their fat for an offering made by fire, for a sweet savour unto the Lord. And the flesh of them shall be thine, as the waved breast, and as the right shoulder are thine. All the heave offerings of the holy things which the children of Israel offer unto the Lord have I given thee, and thy sons and thy daughters with thee, by a statute forever. It is a covenant of salt forever before the Lord unto thee and to thy seed with thee. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, Thou shalt have no inheritance in their land, neither shalt thou have any part among them. I am thy part and thine inheritance among the children of Israel. And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tenth in Israel for an inheritance, for their service which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Neither must the children of Israel henceforth come nigh the tabernacle of the congregation, lest they bear sin and die. But the Levites shall do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they shall bear their iniquity. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations, that among the children of Israel they have no inheritance. But the tithes of the children of Israel which they offer as an heave offering unto the Lord, I have given to the Levites to inherit. Therefore I have said unto them, Among the children of Israel they shall have no inheritance. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Thus speak unto the Levites, and say unto them, When ye take of the children of Israel the tithes which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then ye shall offer up an heave offering of it for the Lord, even a tenth part of the tithe. And this your heave offering shall be reckoned unto you, as though it were the corn of the threshing floor, and as the fullness of the winepress. Thus ye also shall offer an heave offering unto the Lord of all your tithes, which ye receive of the children of Israel. And ye shall give thereof the Lord's heave offering to Aaron the priest. Out of all your gifts ye shall offer every heave offering of the Lord, of the best part thereof, even the hallowed part thereof, out of it. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, When ye have heaved the best thereof from it, then it shall be counted unto the Levites as the increase. God can do. There's no limits on the love He has for 
Thank God, by the grace of God, we're going to be blessed with the message from the man of God this evening. And let's prepare our heart. Media, please, the message. Give me an headquarters. Amen. <laughs> Father, we thank you. We love you. We we glorify you. We adore you. What a great God, a good God, a gracious God you are. That you give us opportunity to listen to you directly by your spirit revealing the scriptures unto us. We're praying that tonight your word will come afresh to everyone in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that you grant us the grace and the strength to earnestly contained for the faith once delivered unto the saints in Jesus' name. That at this hour, at this time, after all these many years, we will not compromise the faith. We will not let down the faith, but in life, in action, in interaction, in our families, and everywhere we are, we will earnestly, positively, passionately contend for this faith in Jesus' name. We'll live for the Lord. We'll act in faith. And Lord, our lives will be glorifying unto you and bringing many people into the faith in Jesus' name. The entrance of your word brings light. I were praying that today you enlighten us to understand the word of God in Jesus' name. Impact in our lives. Result in our lives that the word will bear fruit in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord has blessed you. You can sit down. We're continuing our study of the epistle general of James. And now we come to James chapter 1 verse 9. In James chapter 1 verse 9, it says, Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Look at verse 10. It says, but the rich in that he is made low because at the flower of the grass he shall pass away. Verse 11, and it says, for the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace the goodness, the beauty of the fashion of each passeth, so also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Verse 12, blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Those are the verses we're looking at today. The topic is the present, permanent, and perpetual exaltation of truly consecrated believers. Believers are those who are saved. Believers are those who have given their hearts, their life, Unto the Lord. Believers are the people that have unreservedly, absolutely, completely, without any other thought, 
they have surrendered unto the Lord. They've repented of their sins, all their sins. They're not keeping any sin in them, and they're not practicing any sin in the secret, but they have committed and given themselves unto the Lord in total repentance, in true repentance, in scriptural repentance, and they have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ to wash away all those sins, to forgive them all those sins, and to lean upon the Lord and live for the Lord in the grace of the Lord every time. Believers, these believers are so committed to the Lord day and night, and every day of the week, every week of the month, every month of the year, there is no moment they go back from the Lord. They are consecrated to the Lord. They are committed to the Lord, and they are giving to the Lord wholeheartedly that they will listen to him they will learn from him and they will do whatever he teaches them to do they don't have a double life they're not living like you know Sunday there's sunshine and during the week there is weakness no but all the days they live consistently consecratedly committedly unto the Lord and there is uh, nothing in them contrary to the faith they possess says these are consistent Christians these are committed Christians and these are consecrated believers they have a present and a permanent and a perpetual exaltation that God has promised them and that promise will be yours in Jesus name and so the topic tonight the present permanent and perpetual exaltation of truly consecrated believers. We're looking at three things here. Number one, the present placement of temporal blessings in these end times. Number two, the profitable perseverance of the believers while enduring temptations. Number three, the promised price the promised crown, the promised reward for tried beneficiaries in endless triumph. Let's look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the present placement of temporal blessings in these end times. Uh, let's go back to that again in James chapter 1 verse 9. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Verse 10, it says, But let the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. Verse 11, it says, For the sun is no sun, risen with a burning heat, but it withers the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace, the goodness, the beauty uh, of the of the fashion of it passes, so also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. We're told in First Timothy chapter four, and we're reading there from verse one. It says, "Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart." from the faith they will no more be earnestly contending positively contending practically contending they will no more be passionately contending for the faith in the last days some things will bring discouragement to people or they will be sidetracked to other issues to other things that they are no more giving themselves to lifting up that faith expanding that faith and extending that faith to other people they will go back from the faith they depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils look at verse 2 in verse 2 it said they'll be speaking lies in hypocrisy and having their conscience seared with a hot iron and that means there there are believers who are standing there are believers who are steadfast there are believers who keep to the way the lord has given there are some other people uh, they, they were believers and they still think they are believers but they have departed from the faith they, 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 they are people uh, they're not pursuing material things they are pursuing the riches of the 
the world. And it says those people, they will fade away like the grass, the flower that fades away. But we who know the Lord and love the Lord and keep to the Lord, we have this present placement, even of temporary blessings in these end times. We're looking at three things here. Number one, the wealth and promotion of the godly. Number two, the withering and passing away of the grass. Number three, the wastage and the perishing of their goodliness of their fashion, of their beauty, of the things they are concentrating upon now. The goodness, the beauty, and the, and the splendor will pass away. Look at number one. Number one, the wealth and promotion of the godly. The wealth and the promotion of the godly. If you are godly, that means the grace of God has come to your life. That means you are a brother. That means you are a sister. That means you are a member of the family of God. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. We're told in Romans chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 14, the brother of low degree he may not have too much of the things or count of the things that are tangible here in the world but look at him now in romans chapter 8 verse 14 for as many as are led of the spirit of god they are the sons of god he has the holy ghost leading him he has the holy spirit abiding in him he has the holy spirit guiding and leading and teaching and instructing what a great privilege he has the godly person that's the promotion we're talking about look at verse 15 in verse 15 it says for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear you see that person that is called a brother and it says it's of low degree and the reason it says it should rejoice is he has not received the spirit of bondage the spirit that binds the people of the world and binds them to material things and binds them to material gain and binds them only to the earth and they are working for the dust and they are working for sand and they are not looking at the things in heaven but these people they don't have the fear of the people of the world but he have received the spirit of adoption that's the reason why it says the lowly brother the lowly sister the lowly child of god is exalted that he has received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry abba father look at verse 16 in verse 16 it says the spirit himself bear it witness with our spirit that we are children of God and because we are children of God we can ask we can seek we can knock and whatever we need will be given unto us we may not have it in hand but we have it in the bank of heaven we have it in the presence of God in heaven who is our father and he says because now we're children and the spirit of God assuring us that we are the children of God and bearing witness with our heart that we're children of God, we ask, we receive, we seek, we find, we knock, the door is opened unto us for your father, knowing that ye have need of all these things. All we need to do is seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you because these are the things the Gentiles are seeking, and the Gentiles concentrate on just that the material things but we are concentrating on the kingdom of god in heaven and everything we need is given unto us that's why it says the lowly brother appears lowly on us but everything he needs is actually provided because of that he can rejoice look at verse 17 in verse 17 and if children then heirs heirs of god Heirs, heirs of God, because now the wealth of heaven belongs to us and our portion. He is the Lord 
himself all the things of this world that the moths of the world and everything can destroy all that we leave their toys for them ours is the wealth that no moth or wrath can destroy and because of that we appear to be brothers sisters members of the family of god lowly but actually we are promoted and everything the lord knows you have will come your way will come my way and it says if children then ears ears of god and join each ears with Christ. If so be that ye suffer with him, that ye may also be glorified together. Suffer with him, persecution. Suffer with him, misunderstanding. Suffer with him, misrepresentation. But we're going to be glorified. Therein lies the wealth and the promotion of the God. Look at number two there. Number two is the withering and the passing away of grass it says in james chapter 1 verse 10 it says but the rich the rich without god the rich without grace the rich without godliness the rich that only has the goodliness of the world that is just like grass the rich that only depends on things on earth all he has all he knows all is done is for the world and this world passes away and the loss thereof and the glory thereof but only those that do the will of God will abide forever but the rich in that he is made low because at the flower of the grass he shall pass away and look at this we're looking at um, uh, Psalm 103 we're reading from verse 15 in Psalm 103 verse 15 as for man his days are as grass you see that as for man his days are as grass as a flower of the field so he flourisheth and then verse 16 verse 16 says for the wind passeth over it and it is gone the wind passeth over it and it is gone then the lord gives us light he gives us understanding he gives us enlightenment because the people who don't have the light and the people who are not in the light they're totally in darkness they do not understand that man's life so brief like the grass of the field the people that do not have the light they're the people that are limited in their understanding everything they do everything they think everything they run after is only of this world because because they are in darkness but the Lord gives us light to understand that the wind passeth over the grass and it is gone and the place thereof shall know him no more shall know it no more that the reason we come to the Lord and we love the Lord with all our heart all our soul and all our mind and because we're not concentrating on the things only in this life in first john chapter 2 reading here from verse 15 first john chapter 2 verse 15 love not the world don't concentrate on the world and don't glue your eyes your mind your gaze on the world don't give yourself to the world when you say you have given yourself to the lord look not the world neither the things that are in the world the things that are in the world the wealth of the world the riches of the world the possessions of the world the sand and dust of the world the grass of the world not not the world neither the things that are in the world it says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him verse 16 in verse 16 for all 
that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. What makes them proud? Paper certificate, the pride of life. What makes them proud? The mode of transportation that they have. What makes them proud? The energy, the strength, physical, the thing they have, which is there today and is not there tomorrow. The position they have, the authority, human authority that they have, the thing that is all, and they don't have heaven. They don't have salvation. They don't have the spirit of God bearing witness with their hearts. The children of God, the things they have that makes them proud, the pride of this life. They are not of the Father, but is of the world. In verse 17, it says, And the world passeth away. Like the grass, the world passeth away. Like the goodliness of the things on earth, the world passeth away. Like the thing the people give their hearts, they give their mind, they give all their attention to, the world passeth away. Like the possessions of the world is there now. If the next minute is blown away, the world passeth away. But he that doeth the will of God, abideth forever i will abide forever when all the things of this world when they have all gone because actually when we leave at a time of burial they'll not bury the account book with any of us they'll not bury all the money we stop in the banks they don't bury them with us all the houses and all the properties and everything like grass that fadeth away did not bury anything with us will go but if we have salvation if we have the faith in the lord if we have the confidence we have lived for the lord and we're expecting the crown of righteousness then we go and we rejoice forever and we abide forever. We'll abide forever in Jesus' name. Look at number three here. Number three, the wastage and the perishing of their goodliness. The wastage. How many people waste their lives? The wastage. How many people waste their beauty? The wastage. How many people waste their time, their talent? How many people waste all their effort, all their ability? The wastage and the passing away of their goodliness. That's why it says in James chapter 1, verse 11, it says, For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass all the things that you know the the, the store in a secret place and they say i'm going to enjoy that for many years to come all of a sudden death knocks at their door as they're saying my soul take your ease eat and drink because he had so much possession then the lord said thou fool this night your soul will be required of you and whose will all this is be that you have gathered together so you see that is rich in the things of this world and it's not rich in grace it's not rich towards god it's not rich in godliness all he has all he can point to is the grass that fadeth away and it says for the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat but it withereth the grass and the flower thereof falleth and the grace the goodness and the beauty and the pleasure of the fashion of it perishes so also shall the rich man 
The rich man who does not know God, the rich man has position on earth, does not have a place in heaven. So shall also the rich man fade away in his ways. I pray you will not be like that. I will not be like that. And look at Luke chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 16, Luke chapter 12. Verse 16, and he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Plentifully. That's what hinders some people. They cannot come to study the Bible with us once a week like this, because the ground of that rich man has brought forth plentifully that's what happens to some people they've got one degree they, they, they are running for another degree they've got one doctorate they're running for another doctorate that's why they cannot study the bible the ground of a rich man brought forth plentifully that's why some people cannot give themselves to learning the word of god because they have an award here they have another award there and people are calling them here and all that they're running after all those things that like the grass that fades away and when death comes and when the unexpected comes they leave all those things and they go to a lost eternity look at verse 17 in verse 17 and he thought within himself saying what shall i do because i have no room where to bestow my fruits the fruits are so many the fruits of learning the fruits of working the fruit of earning the fruit of amassing and the fruit of just gathering and gathering and gathering they have no time they can reach a hundred books in a year they have a goal i read two books every week and i you know i have to do that i read on business i read on finance i read on human relationships i read on this i read on that they have no time to read the one single book that will determine their destiny the one single book that will pave way for them in eternity but they read and read and read they labor and labor they study and study they work and they work and there is no time to do the work that the lord will reward them for in eternity all the work they're doing is what will perish at the end of their day and he thought within himself saying what shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? Look at verse 18. In verse 18, then he said, This will I do. It's a man of planning. It's not planning for heaven, it's planning for the harvest on earth. It's a man of uh, thinking. It's not thinking of heaven, it's thinking of what he has here on earth. It's a man of uh, activity a purposeful activity but the purpose is only for the things of this world think about your life what do you plan for what do you aim at what are you running after and what do you spend your night thinking and working on well all those things might be good temporarily are you thinking about heaven are you thinking about holiness are you thinking about the grace of God that should increase in your life and take you on to heaven when you die? This man had no thought of grace, no thought of God, no thought of godliness, and no thought of going to the great beyond to be with the Lord when he dies. He says, this will I do. I will pull down my pants and build greater i'll get you know better engineers that constructed this other one and now we're going to have a better place to store everything that i'm there will i bestow all my fruits and my goods then in verse 19 and i will say to my soul he knew that he had a soul but he didn't make any room for that soul. 
any forgiveness for that soul, any salvation for that soul, any cleansing for that soul, any preparation for that soul to be with God in eternity. All he could say to the soul, I have these material things. Now look at what he said. He said, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Man, how do you know you have many years? I have a health plan. I do medical tests every time. And I make sure that I am fit. And whatever, I tell them the money is there. And whatever health I need you people, put your heads together. And put your research together. And give me the most modern uh, solution to my health challenge. And because he thought he had everything made, he said, I have much goods. But later on for many years, take thine ease each day drink and be merry verse 20 now god has the final say i was waiting for an amen there amen. on the people of the world god has the final say on the people who think is there god is there no god never mind god has the final say on the people who kill themselves on projects 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 god has the final say on the people who are running and running after the things of this world god has the final say on the thoughtless they are not thinking where would they spend eternity god has the final say but god said unto him thou fool this night i was thinking of many years this night thy soul shall be required of thee then who shall those things be which thou hast provided look at verse 21 in verse 21 so is he that lays up treasure for himself for himself for himself and there's some so-called believers too they don't think of the bible they learn doctrine the doctrine is in the head it doesn't come to the heart they're stacking away money money here in their country money there overseas money everywhere and there is need there's need of preaching the gospel there's need of helping your neighbor there is need of being whatever needs to be done so that more souls will come into the kingdom uh -uh. they don't think of that money 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 they stack it away over there and the thing is uh, growing and expanding and they don't think they don't think, even those who are getting older and older and older, they don't think that when death comes, they leave all those riches suddenly. And whose will those things be that they are provided for themselves? They're not rich towards God. There are people, they hear about the rapture. The rapture can take place and you say, give me the next word. They say, anytime. They know that in their head. They don't know that in their heart. All the money you stack in all the banks and everywhere, you will not touch it. Even when your wife is sick, you will not touch it. Even when the children need this and that, you want that thing to reach a million. I want to be a millionaire. You want that thing to reach a billion. I want to be a billionaire if Christ comes at any time. If the rapture takes place at any time, you're not going to take the billions away to heaven if you're able to make it at all because you will not take it away. When the rapture comes at any time, who will spend it? It will be in the hands of the Antichrist after you are gone. If you go, if you don't go, 
if the rapture takes place and you remain here all that money is there in the bag it's there everywhere i store it and i take shares shares there shares there if you don't make the rapture even that money you cannot spend freely because you have to take the mark of the antichrist before you can buy or sell and if you take the mark of the antichrist with all your money whatever you buy whatever you sell you're doomed and damned and condemned forever this is the reason we need to think and we need to understand that the goodness of the rich people if they don't have god if they are god and they forget god and they are running after riches so is he that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards god we're coming to point number two here point number two the profitable perseverance of believers while enduring temptations we're looking at james chapter one we're looking at verse 12 first part of verse 12 blessed is the man that endureth temptation blessed is the man that receives temptation blessed is the man that still stands firm and still holds himself up over under the pressure of temptation we're looking at three things here number one resisting the tempter with the sword of the world number two refusing appealing temptations in supplication with willingness number three rejecting attractive temptations with the steadfastness of the warrior look at number one number one resisting the tempter with the sword of the world the devil is the tempter and he was so audacious that he could even come to christ and tempt christ and he a tempter the tempter will tempt christ we christians who do we think we are that the devil will not tempt us no matter how high no matter how much exposed no matter how intelligent and no matter how strong you think you are if christ was tempted you cannot escape being tempted but god give you the grace